So, what is Needy Streamer Overload? It's a cute little streamer management game where the streamer is also your girlfriend. So it's also kind of a dating sim too, right? In this video is my interpretation of what takes place in the game. I'd love to hear different opinions in the comments, so let me know your thoughts. I wouldn't describe myself as a Doki Doki super fan because, you know, as you can clearly see, I lack the 100% completion achievement here for Doki Doki Plus. But when I saw the tags for this game on Steam, I knew instantly that I had to give it a try at least. I'm not going to cover everything in the game in case you want to play it yourself, but also for another reason that I'll get into later in the video. So this is Ame, the streamer and your SO. She wants to become the world's most famous internet angel through her online persona, OMG Kawaii Angel, or Kangel for short, or as I like to say, Kangle. Ame is shy but honest about her feelings, for better, as you, for the most part, know how she feels, and worse, because when out of character, she can sometimes be too honest about things, like her feelings towards her fans. And Kangel is this extroverted, bubbly girl who's the face of the stream. Kangel is still Ame. This isn't split personality, totally different people. They still share traits together and personality. But without her overall more reserved personality, among other things that we will get into later. But what about you, P-Chan? So you could argue that P-Chan stands for Player-Chan, but I don't actually think this is the case because you don't really have any autonomy over the character. In your playthrough, you communicate with Ame through stickers in a messaging app and some limited responses that you can choose from every now and again. Can I be serious? forever. I don't care. These limited responses are why I don't think you, the player, are actually P-Chan. Because assuming you stay consistent with your attitude towards Ame in each playthrough, you can either be a loving partner, indifferent towards her. Hey, my emotional range is very limited with these options. Look at me as a Or just downright abusive to her. Do you think it's okay for me to keep the well, what have we done? Later, I'll get into why I think that last option is what drives the psychological horror aspect of this game to be worse than, say, Doki Doki's. So we start out with Ame giving us full control of not only her account, but of her. She promises to do whatever we say, for better or worse, depending on Pichan's wishes. Oh, I'm going to refer to Pichan in the third person for the most part, because, as I said before, I don't think that we, the player, are Pichan. He's just a vessel for the story to move. This is our first hint at worse things to come later. Anyway, we have a few different mechanics in game, but the main ones are the chat box with Ame, activities you can do with her to get ideas and maintain her stats, and the stream itself where you choose the stream and moderate her chat. And the stats themselves appear in the top right. The stats we have are stress, affection, and uh, mental darkness. I wouldn't describe this as a hint, but it's our second point of knowing that everything is not okay with Ame. As we progress through the game, more and more about Ame is revealed about the aspects of her depression and trauma. These stats have to be kept in balance. Keep them too low and Ame might just give up, stating things like, what's the point in life without stress? And let them get too high and some deeply sad and uncomfortable things will happen. We'll get into this more later. So to lighten the mood for a moment, <laughs> Eventually, Kangel has a music video made for her, and it's actually a total bot. I think it was made in collaboration with a YouTuber. I'm only playing a snippet of it because of copyright, but I'll leave a link in the description, check it out. I'm also not saying the name because I'm afraid of butchering the pronunciation. Okay, from this point on, I'm going to start showing a lot more of the gameplay that is relevant to my thoughts and feelings on different aspects of the game, and I'll be popping in to discuss certain topics as they are shown, but from this point on, there are clear-cut sections that I want to cover. So, what about Pichan and Ame's relationship? The only word that I can think of to describe okay the relationship between our characters is toxic. 
At best, Ame is absolutely emotionally dependent on Pichan, requiring a lot of validation and reassurance. But you can do your best to make Pichan a caring partner, depending on how you go through the playthrough. I think if anyone would even miss me if I were gone, they don't have to watch me, they can go watch some other streamer. I have 12,000 viewers, Ame. No way. You're just saying that. You really like me for me and not because I'm pretty. Well done. Oh wait, no, I clicked the wrong one. I thought the middle one was the bad, the bad one. Oh. What do people even like you? You think the lower half of your body? Your ever. Oh god, he wants a factory defect like me. Done. I feel like I shouldn't be allowed to live. Of course you're allowed. Do we need to beg her? And at worst, or do we need Ame to is emotionally manipulative and abusive, threatening to hurt or worse herself depending on hypothetical situations like breaking up with her. That's kind of textbook manipulation. And you can choose to make Pichan a truly awful person. You can make him say some really messed up stuff to her. This is kind of why I don't consider the player to too. be P-Chan. P-Chan is just a vessel for the story really to move me, forward really me, really because you really don't actually have you. much autonomy over what he um, does, like so I said used... earlier, other than choosing from some very specific ah. options, because like being good. nice or being the worst person to... Okay. Live as the internet angel, do your best, or that last option. Like how? That's so vague. Oh my goodness. Everything but after talking with Pichan, I feel like I can keep, I can keep going. Oh, what is happening? So another way Ame will communicate with Pichan is through her private Twitter account. I know, legally distinct Twitter, not Twitter, but I am going to call it just Twitter from now on. because You can't respond to these, but they can range from nice to passive aggressive. And this is also she where she shares her true thoughts about her fans. About this is kind of ah, so an happy. immature way so of communicating in a relationship, <laughs> which goes back to why I think so their relationship is ultimately toxic. So Not because of this, it's just a part of it. So the main way the pair communicates is through their messaging. Occasionally you are given actual text messages to choose from, but mainly you use these stickers. They convey different ways of responding to Ame's messages, ranging from indifference to love. And she loves to respond in different ways too, mainly with this goddamn orb. What the heck does I'm orb mean? And she just orbs too much. I never really deciphered what these things mean from both her and from what you can choose from, but I believe that's kind of a point. You can never really consistently communicate in a way that is helpful. You can't keep getting away with it! And as I said earlier, Ame hands over full control of herself and the channel to Pichan. This is another example of her total dependence on Pichan, who then chooses to use this power to help or abuse. So the next part I'm calling the social commentary aspect of the game, but it's not really a commentary. It, this isn't Black Mirror. None of it is metaphorical. It's just, you know, exactly what actually happens online is an example of it. As Kangel grows in popularity, she starts to receive more and more messages from her fans through Twitter. She gets compliments, fan arts, and general support. However, she is also bombarded with hate and sexual harassment. People bully her be just because she's a woman. They call her these hateful things and demand to see her... Well, I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. If you're a woman, you don't need me to tell you what you go through online. And it doesn't take a rocket genius to see that this simply reflects reality. If you're a man and know any women in online spaces, just ask them what it's like and you'll probably be shocked about what they go through. Or just sit and read the chat of any woman's stream and you'll see it there. You see these hate messages when you are moderating her chat, where you can ban them to keep her stress levels down, and on her Twitter. This was actually the first point that I noticed my own emotional investment in the well-being of Ame. Learning about her, what she's been through, and what goes through her head, seeing the hate messages makes you feel a little protective. And immediately after that, I realized another aspect of this game's horror. 
I was feeding into Ame's dependence on Peach Anna. This game is not scary, not in a jump scare, shock value kind of way, really. And it didn't really hit me psychologically in the brain. That's just me, you could have experienced it differently, or might experience it differently if you haven't played it. So, what I'm actually going to do is swap out the description of psychological horror for emotional torment. Because the horror in this game, at least to me, was far more emotionally taxing than it was scary. I'm going to make a few comparisons to Doki here, because that's kind of my baseline for this kind of horror game, and is a game I would consider to be horror, at least in the jump scare sense. It has those later in the game. So, in Doki Doki, you are more just along for the ride. You can choose from three paths through the story, but you as the player don't really actually affect much. But the things that happen in Needy Streamer Overload are all a direct result of your actions. That's why I think of it more of an emotional torment game, because you're the one, ultimately, that is making these things happen to Andy. Depression is also a big driving force in the game's horror. During my playthroughs, I was able to learn about Ami's backstory and some of the trauma that she's holding onto. This trauma being the main source of her need for reassurance and validation from Pichan. Her dependence on Pichan is part of the emotional torment I mentioned, because when you aren't going for certain endings and are just focusing on the 1 million follower goal, it makes you want to help her through what it is, inevitably. This is an unwinnable battle. If you stress Ame oh, out no. too much, she resorts to self-harm to calm her herself down. Much. But not only does she resort to it, she forces oh, you to do it to her in oh, what, what is kind fuck? of a mini-game after taking control of your screen. No. Don't make me... Okay, patting her on the head made her... Okay, we cannot let her stress. It's painful, but I promise it's nothing. She feels really looking to put her head real deep inside. Uh, and if you finish your playthrough with the affection of being too high while achieving 1 million so followers, you'll be met with the ending that results in dissatisfaction yes, with streaming and moving on with her life and Peach. Oh. On the surface, though, this feels like a good ending because it through her Twitter she seems happy. And I certainly thought that of the endings that I got, this was the goodest. But after thinking about it and looking at her photos again on her Twitter, there's this undertone that this is somehow going down a path of drug abuse. So nothing I want to feel something more. Still not it. Guys, can you promise me that you won't forget tonight's stream and don't forget about me? Either? I feel so happy. What? Be careful of overdosing on emotions. But do you love me? Okay, that's the ending we were going for. Okay. Which leads into my next point, the mental darkness stat. If this gets too high, it can lead to some quite distressing drug use. And another thing that I'll get into shortly. If you let them all reach zero, at least in my experience, which seems good on the surface, at least for stress and mental darkness, you'd want those to be as low as possible. But Ame just gives up and leaves with the stress one, for example, like I said earlier. What's the point in life without stress? She just leaves. And this is all part of why I call this game an emotional torment game instead of a psychological horror game. Everything that happens to Ame is a direct result of what you tell her to do. It's your fault, and the game wants you to feel bad about it. So, I have been tackling this from a perspective of this not being a scary horror game. 
but there are some unsettling moments still, that are a bit more traditional in horror terms. Sometimes Ame will take control, and you'll be shown some quite disturbing imagery. You'll be forced to do things that you don't want to, and it was as I was writing my script that I realized Ame takes away your consent at one point in the game. I don't know if I do. <laughs> oh, thanks. Oh, God. Is this because of my affection? So can we fuck today? Oh, my goodness. And we're gone. I didn't have a choice in the matter. You are literally forced to have certain relations with her. And if she loves you too much, you might just end up dead. Oh no. Oh no. She couldn't handle the overdose of love. These things connect back to what I said at the start about this relationship, at its core, being toxic. And as a side note, okay. I achieved, yay achievement, another ending where Ame makes her own religion and dresses up as an angel or god or something. By pushing her mental darkness too hard, pushing her to take a lot of drugs, and making her go hard into conspiracy theories, she got dressed up and made a religion. On the surface, or without context, you could look at this and be like, haha, internet streamer, cult funnies. But in reality, we are looking at a person in the midst of a full drug-induced mental breakdown. And it was my fault. You let me know? Hey, why do you think humans wage all these? The internet population has blown up, and now wherever you turn, people are fighting. So things are, I guess, but what could we... You suggest it. We guessed it, we just have to reduce the amount of people. If we reduce the population to 10% of what it is now, then no one would fight. Peace would flourish. Let there be peace on earth. Oh my goodness. That was almost a jump scare, but then the image was... She was not ready for the truth yet. Oh. Oh, okay, well, we got to the welcome to my religion one, I guess. Okay. And this is when I stopped playing. I'd originally planned to 100% the game before making a video, but it was just making me too sad. I'm not an easily bothered person by this kind of thing, but this game pushed me to a bit of a limit, so I just kind of stopped before it got too bad, you know? So, good job game, you effectively did your job of psychologically and emotionally tormenting me, I'd give you a thumbs up if I had the upper body strength to lift my arms above my waist. This game is great, but please proceed with caution if you do decide to play it, as it deals with some pretty heavy topics. Comparing it again to my baseline game in this genre, it does a much more effective job of instilling great discomfort into me than Doki Doki ever did, as it made me face the result of my actions as well. Also in Doki Doki, you're kind of just along for the ride as these things happen, Whereas you are the driving force in DD Stream Group. But thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Please leave a like and a subscribe if you want to see more from me. I really appreciate it and the likes. I know some people don't believe it. Maybe I'm not fully convinced either, but apparently they do help the algorithm. So I would appreciate that. And I want to hear your thoughts on the game. So please, there's something here that is worth discussing. So, but if you can't think of anything to say, how about typing, it's pronounced angel, not kangle. Okay. Thanks.